Every time I walk into a shop or meet someone new on the street, they always say to me, Hey Luke, what insert would you use for this? Or what would you choose for that? This is Luke with Practical Machinist and welcome to episode 2 of the Lathe Lab. Today we're going to expand on the first video. If you haven't gone and watched episode 1, go back. It's pretty cool if I don't mind saying so myself. We're going to, as I say, we're going to expand on that episode a little bit and we're going to go over a little bit of tooling selection. We could probably spend about five different videos on insert selection or one video for about five hours, but we're going to start a little bit slower and we're going to dive into the basics of insert selection on what insert would you use for a rough turning application and why and the speeds and feeds associated. What insert would you use for a finish turning application and the associated speeds and feeds. And the third part of this video we're going to go over is a special insert that you would use for both roughing and finishing if you need special clearance. So let's hop right in. We're going to roll on dubs real quick and figure out what tool are we going to use to rough turn and how are we going to run that tool. There's a lot of tools that you could choose from. Probably the most common I know of for rough turning is a CNMG and a WNMG. The W and the C are the style of insert. We like to use a WNMG432, which is this one right here. Size of insert, 4. W is the style. And the N number is what's real important for what we're about to cover here. When you're rough turning, you want to do three things. Remove a lot of material as fast as possible while maintaining predictable and safe tool life. We don't want catastrophic failures. WNMG 432 for, us, 432 for us gives us great predictable tool life and six cutting edges. So I know everyone's thinking, what do you mean 432? So that number at the end is the size of your nose radius in increments of 64th. So WNMG 432 is 264th. 2 divided by 64th is about 031. WNMG 433 is 364th. 3 divided by 64 is about 45. What I'm about to say there's a lot of people out there that are not going to like this at all. This is a loose rule that I teach my students about feed rate because feed rate is important. We want to break the chip, but we don't want to rip the machine apart and tear the tool out. So when it comes to your feed rate on your rough turning, this is a loose rule so everyone don't freak out. I like to give people the one-third and two-thirds rule. I want to see you feed your rough turn at one-third the nose radius minimum and two-thirds the nose radius maximum. So on a, two, on a 432, 264, it's about 30, 31 thousandths. I want to see you feed that tool one-third minimum, which is 10, 10,000 feed rate, feed F.010 is 10 thousandths per revolution. And I want to see you feed that tool two-thirds maximum. So one third of 031 is about 10 thousands, two thirds of that's about 20 thousands. I very rarely take it up to that 20 thousands or two thirds rule. And keep in mind, that's a loose starting point for people that aren't sure of how to feed their tool. But one thing is certain, you need to maintain a pretty quick, and that's a technical term, pretty quick, a pretty quick feed rate to break the chip. You're not going to be able to break the chip. If, um, you're not going to be able to have a decent cycle time and manage your chips feeding a 432 at <clears throat> 2 thousandths per revolution. It's not going to happen. I'm sure it has for someone and someone else will say, oh yeah, it did for me back in 1994. I'm sure it did. What I like to do is I like to feed that tool fast as possible, break the chip, maintain my good tool life. So that's our feed rate. One third, two third rule. Second thing is everyone's saying, well, what are you going to run for your surface footage? Your surface footage, there's not one size fits all SFM. The SFM is going to have to do with the material you're cutting, what type of tool, what type of machine. That, I'm going to recommend you go for your tooling manufacturer. Third thing, your depth of cut. Depth of cut is how much material are you going to remove per side. The per side thing, we'll get into another time, so it can be a little complicated, at least it was for me, us low IQ folks. So your depth of cut has to do with how much material you're going to remove per side and how much depth of cut we want is proportional to the size of our nose radius on our insert. So I'm going to use a 432 that's 264th as we've covered redundantly. 
264 says 031. I want to make sure that you cut at least that full depth of cut. So I want to have one times the radius depth of cut minimum. Minimum. So we, if, if you don't engage that full radius, your chances of managing that, managing that chip are less and less with the least amount, the less you engage that radius. And on a lot of machines that we're using today with insert technology, one, one times the radius depth of cut, that's easy to attain. It's easy to achieve. So if you get your surface footage good from your manufacturer, you're excellent. Maintain the one-third, two-third rule, or start a little bit slower on it, but don't go too slow. Start with the one-third feed minimum, 10 thousandths per rev on a 32. And the third thing, if you maintain that depth of cut a minimum, the nose radius, and then dial that up or down, or I guess more up, as you have to, to get your cycle time and manage your chip. If you do those three things, it's a wonderful place to start on insert selection for rough turning and how to run it. So let's take a look real quick. Let's hop actually into the lathe lab. Let's watch the machine run and see us roughing off some material. You can see if WNMG 432 roughing some 416. All right, let's move on to the next section. What you just saw there was a video of rough turning. We were rough turning 416 stainless steel with a WNMG 432, and I believe we got our feed rate up to about 13 to 14 thousandths per revolution. So we were right in the middle of that one third to two third rule. Surface footage, I think, was around 550 SFM, <clears throat> which was from our manufacturer specs on 416. It went well. You could see the chips were breaking. No issues. The chip management is important. We also saw what a WNMG 432 looks like physically. So now we're going to talk about finish turning the WNMG 431. That first section when I was back there talking previously, it was pretty lengthy and long-winded. Trust me, I know. But that's really important information that has to be covered. And that was such a long speech for lack of a better term so we could knock those basics out of the way because rough finish rough turning finish turning profiling pre-finish finish they all follow the similar aspects you need to know what your rpm is or your surface footage you need to know what to cut for a depth of cut and you need to know what you could feed your insert at the one third two third rule can be spread over the sfm we can find from the manufacturer What's really important that a lot of people overlook when it comes to finish turning that we're going to cover now is the depth of cut. We're using a WNMG 431 that has a one nose radius, 164 to about 15 and a half thousands, 0.0156. That's what I want to see you leave for your material removal after your rough turn. So when your rough turn, say you have a part like this, you rough it all down. And you're gonna, you have to know what your material allowance is for your finished turn. I want you to leave 15 thousandths per side. And same thing, a lot of people are going to say, no, you can leave one. You can leave 50. Maybe that's true. But I like to have a rule that I teach employees I work with and students at the school. Leave the nose radius per side. Maybe you have to adjust it a little bit here and there for whatever reason. But it works. It works. And also your feed rate. For a finished turn, we're going to feed minimum one-third the radius, which would be about five thousandths per rev, maximum two-thirds the radius, which is about ten. And I'm going to reiterate because there's going to be people that say, you know, this guy is absurd. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's a loose rule for people to follow. I've been 20, 25 some odd years or something in a CNC or about 20 in a shop. I'd have a good idea what to finish in rough turn 303 stainless steel. Someone else on lathe 15 years, they know. But think about the person that is just starting. Where do they start? Google? And they're going to go there? You have to give them a starting point. And then you use that as a guide up and down a little bit more, a little bit less to suit you, your machine, your application. So that's a basic rundown of finished turning. 
What finished turning is going to do is make the part look pretty after the rougher has done the majority of the work. And you can see in that other video, that rough turn is doing some work. We're turning, I think, three and a half inch diameter down to about 2.050. And the finished turn then is going to come and clean. It's going to finish face. It's going to finish turn. I kicked up the surface footage a little bit less, but my feed rate is lower because my nose radius is smaller. So let's take a quick video of that. We're going to go to the machine, take a look. We're going to come back and follow up with the next section. All right, that's finished turning. And the, the same thing, a couple terms I hate to use. One of them is bread and butter. Finished turning, like rough turning, is your bread and butter on a lathe. The rough turn prepares the tool, the part for the finished turn. The rough turn does the hard work. Boom, 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 boom. Rough turns it off. Finished turn comes, make it look nice and purty. But there's other applications in which a WNMG or a CNMG wouldn't work. Air 2 or whatever that saying is, look at this part. This is kind of like, um, I don't know, whatever it might be, a little weird Christmas tree thing. Here's your WNMG. Your WNMG can't get in these grooves. It can't do it. It'll smash. So what do we do? Either A, we don't run this part and we throw it in the trash, or B, we make it work with this type of tool. This particular geometry or tools called a VNMG332, and take a look. It will come in there and profile all of them. Beautiful. VNMG332. Another option would be this one that I believe is a VCMT. Same thing. It's going to come in here. Boom. Well, maybe not at that back, it'll hit. But you get the idea. Now, we talked about rough turn, finish turn. This last section, we're going to be talking about a special insert or type of turning that you're going to use this different tool for clearance that a W or a CNMG wouldn't work. Furthermore, there's applications like this, which is brass, in which you don't need necessarily to have a rough and finish turn unless your tolerances or surface finish for that finisher was super critical. Something like this would work fine. You could use your rougher, rough it all out, rough it out, come back and profile it all with the same tool because it's brass. You know, and I get a lot of people that come around saying, oh no, I'm going to have a rough and finish everything. I'm going to have a rougher, a pre-finish, a finish. If it's brass with wide open tolerance, wide open tolerances, grab a used tool, program it, rock and roll. Save yourself some money, time, and most importantly, a headache. Same here, look at that. You would come in here, rough, 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 rough. And then you're going to use that same tool to profile it all. Beautiful. So that's that last section I wanted to talk about. Special profiling tool. Got one more video for you to see that shows that. A job that I program where you, we're using the same tool to rough the ball, then the same tool to finish the ball. No problems at all because it's brass. So take a look at that. Then we're going to come back, talk about everything for a moment, conclude the video. So it was pretty cool watching that VNMG come back and rough the back of the ball, the front of the ball, and then come back and profile it. One of my favorite things to do, I love to see it develop 
those shapes like that. And I hope that you can understand why a CNMG or a WNMG can't go in and make that, can't go in and finish a part like that. It wouldn't have the clearance. That VNMG that we used had a 55 degree clearance angle, so that's why it could come back behind the ball. So that, that was pretty fun to, to do and pretty fun to film for the video. In conclusion, I got my practical machinist gear, my swag that they sent. Thank you, practical machinist. And so to conclude, we covered rough turn, finish turn, and what I like to call pro, special profiling or special clearance tools. I don't really use them a lot, so that's why I'll, get, I'll put it in that category. Other shops and other machinists out there might run balls like that all the time, and to them, that's standard, and a WNMG would be more of a specialized tool. For me, it's not. You know, a C, a VNMG, VCMT is more of a specialized tool. I don't use it a lot. And we only use it for clearance like that in the back. So just to recap on the video, we covered rough turning, finish turning, and that special clearance tool. We determined how do you figure out your surface footage, get a hold of your tool manufacturer. We covered your depth of cut. You want to be at least one times the nose radius to engage that chip breaker and manage the chip. We went over your feed rate, which is the one-third and the two-third rule. I want to see you feed minimum one-third that no nose radius, maximum two-thirds that nose radius. And keep in mind, like I've reiterated, and the reason I did is because I have had pushback about it in the past. It's a starting point for people who are just beginning in the industry. So they're not going to feed their tool at 45 inches per rev, and they're not going to feed it at one and a half thou per rev on a rough turn. It's a starting point. It's something for people that are beginning in the industry to learn or other people that see how other shops do it. You know, more experienced person, see how another machinist, programmer, or shop does it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, this is Luke with Lathe Lab. Like, comment, subscribe, go down, leave a comment. Tell me what you think, what, what you would like to see. Also, you could check me out at Crusader Machining at YouTube. I got a few videos up there as well at Crusader Machining on Instagram. And once again, thank you Practical Machinists for having me on your channel for the series, The Lathe Lab. And I look forward to seeing you guys again for episode three.